Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna explain what an external GPU is, how other eGPUs compare, and if the performance of an eGPU is worth the investment. Um, I recommend going through the timestamps I left below if you wanna skip around. The first part of this video is going to be about what eGPU to buy, how different types compare, and what the best value is. So if you wanna skip ahead and look at the real world testing and results, see the timestamps in the comment section. So what exactly is a eGPU? Uh, it's basically an external graphics processor and you could use it with Windows and Mac, but for this demonstration, I'm gonna be using it with my Mac mini 2018. Uh, Apple has an article up that will show you the different types of eGPUs you could use. There's all-in-one eGPU products, such as the uh, Breakaway Puck, that I first read up on. And then there's different configurations where you could get a video card separately in which you would have to install it into a separate box or chassis. In this video, I'm gonna be showing the results from using a AMD Radeon RX 580 coupled with the Sonnet EGFX Breakaway Box 550 watt. Now upon researching this, uh, I literally went to Google and typed in eGPU Ableton or eGPU DAW. And this is one of the first threads I came upon, which actually was only from a few months back uh, in late 2019. This guy essentially said he was having some problems with this 2018 Mac mini, but after he upgraded to an eGPU, he was seeing much better performance. He was essentially saying the inbuilt CPU couldn't play one track with the puck. He managed 47 equal tracks, which was 188 hardcore plugins. And the CPU usage was around 33%. Uh, to me, that seems like a drastic improvement. I was a little skeptical at first, so I kind of wanted to test it for myself. The card this guy was using was a, the Sonnet Breakaway Puck Radeon RX 560. If we go to Amazon, that retails for around $399. After I was looking around a little bit, I realized I could get a better card for around the same price, but just in a bigger package. The breakaway box from the same company from Sonnet is around $244. This allows you the option to get any video card you want. For me, I ended up getting the Radeon RX 580, which was $180. That price comes to around $423. So $423 versus $400, you got a $23 difference. You get a much improved graphics card. If we look at the benchmarks here, the puck on the right side comes with the 560. And from my custom configuration, I got the 580. If we look at the effective speed, as well as just an average user benchmark, uh, we're getting over a 100% increase in improvement. It's also much better for gaming, although I'm not gonna really be using it for gaming. But but overall, it's a much better card and it should net better results in real world testing. Now, if you want to go even further, another card that Apple recommends is the RX Vega 56. This card's pretty expensive, but it does also fit into the Breakaway Box 550. If we compare the Vega 56 to my RX 580, there's around a 30 to 50% improvement here, depending on which category we're looking at. But the price difference is quite steep. Again, the RX 580 is $180, while the RX Vega 56 is around $400. So more than double the price. And I think for what we're gonna be doing in our DAW, I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference. One of the most popular choices for an external GPU enclosure was the Razer Core X. This one is around $56 more than the Sonnet Breakaway Box. Um, but when I was doing a little bit of research on YouTube and forums, a lot of people were saying the Razer Core X is a little more noisy. And if you're gonna have this enclosure on the same desk and area that you record your vocals or other instruments in, you probably want the most quiet enclosure. And I found that in my research, many people said the Sonnet is a more quiet external GPU enclosure. Again, this enclosure comes in two separate configurations, a 550 watt or a 650 watt. If you want the 650 watt, you're gonna use that for a more strong graphics card, such as the Vega series. But I think for our uses in Ableton or other DAWs, we probably don't need a graphics card that powerful. You can get on Amazon for $244, same with B&H. They have it for same price, $244.99. If you go to Sonnet's actual website and you click on the eGPU info, they have a graphics card compatibility PDF file where if you click on it, it'll give you an entire list of what cards are compatible with Mac and Windows. This list is actually quite long because they give every different model number and manufacturing type. Certain cards are built by manufacturers called like Power Color, others by Sapphire, which is the one I got, the Sapphire Pulse. And there's many others in here in which this PDF will tell you whether or not it's compatible with Mac or Windows. 
Upon further research, there's of course going to be some mixed results out there, as well as issues with macOS Catalina in general. One of the first things I came across was the thread where a person bought the Puck and it helped his performance a huge amount. And we had users responding also saying, I started using an eGPU with my MacBook Pro a couple of months ago, totally sold on it and wish I had invested in one earlier. There's other threads on Ableton's forums where they say there's no performance enhancement after adding an external GPU, but this was on a Windows system, so I think it might vary from system to system, and it also depends on which OS you're running. On macOS Mojave, it may run better because I've read a lot of issues occurring on macOS Catalina, especially 10.15.2, which is the one I am on right now. It is the one I did all my testing on. Mac OS version 10.15.2 has apparently been causing a lot of problems. There's many articles from Cult of Mac and from Apple's forums of people stating different issues that are occurring for their external GPU. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit here, it says that there is a lot of issues occurring with the Radeon 570 and 580 series, which is the one I bought. But however, the Vega series GPUs are working just fine. If we go to this Apple forum, which luckily I actually found it, a user down here states that you cannot have have the eGPU running when restarting the Mac Mini because all you get is the black screen of death, which is actually what happened to me. And I was wondering why the system wasn't booting up. Uh, the fix for it is if you shut down your Mac and say you come back tomorrow and you want to turn everything on, I usually turn the switch off on the eGPU, turn the Mac Mini on, wait about 30 seconds, then flick the switch on the back of the eGPU. And after five to 10 seconds, the screens will pop on just fine. But if you have the eGPU turned on at the same time, Time that you turn the Mac Mini on, you will get the black screen of death and nothing will ever display on your Mac Mini. I'm not sure if these issues are occurring in macOS Mojave or macOS Catalina 10.15.1, but I know they're for sure occurring in 10.15.2. So on to the actual testing of whether or not an external GPU can improve the performance of your digital audio workstation. In this case, I'm using Ableton 10. To show you, I have XO running throughout this entire thing and I have a simple drum pattern running right here. Each of these drum tracks are routed to an actual track in Ableton in which they have an instance of Neutron 3 running with single or multiple modules initiated. Sometimes just an equalizer with a slight bell curve, other times with light compression, but each of my drum tracks have an instance of Neutron 3 on them. Separate from the drum tracks are 11 different synthesizers each synthesizer is doing a different pattern on MIDI, and each synthesizer has some sort of audio effect running in addition to the plugin itself. For example, Pigments has a multi-band compressor running on it. Serum has a Pro-Q3 and Black Box running on top of it. There's an instance of Contact running, which has analog strings engaged within it, which might I add is a 30 gigabyte library. And on top of analog strings is SoftTube's tape running alongside it. For my master chain, I have two metering plugins at the end of it, which is the loudness meter, as well as span for the frequency analyzer. Also at the end, I have Sonarworks reference for running for my sound correction. And depending on the test I have running at the time, I have FabFilter Pro L2, Ozone 9 Advanced, with all the modules engaged, and Shadow Hills Mastering Compressor from Plugin Alliance. Now each test is going to differ. Some tests I'll have these plugins turned off, while others I'll have maybe five modules from Ozone Advance engaged. And for the most CPU taxing test, I had all of the modules engaged along with every synth and plugin associated with it. So let's take a look at the actual results of my testing. On the left side over here, uh, I have a little legend that shows the buffer size for each test that I did. You'll see eGPU single, which means I only had a single mod monitor plugged in directly to the eGPU. My secondary monitor was not plugged into anything and no monitors were plugged into the Mac. Uh, eGPU both means both of my monitors were plugged in directly to the eGPU. Again, no monitors were plugged into the Mac. eGPU second is having the primary monitor plugged into the Mac, but the secondary monitor plugged into the eGPU. And how I set that up was if we go into Finder, and you go to the application section. If you right click on any application and click on get info, you could actually select an option that says prefer external GPU. So I went through each plugin such as Ozone 9 down here and other plugins as well. And I checked the box that says prefer external GPU for each of these applications. Lastly, Mac Mini both. That just means I had both 
monitors plugged in directly to the Mac Mini, which is essentially going to tell you how the performance is going to be without an eGPU. Under that, you'll see which plugins I actually used within the session and on the master bus. And at the top here, you could click to three different scenarios I did for this test. One is called no mastering. The second is called the mastering plugins and meters, which has more synths added, as well as some mastering plugins added as well. And lastly was something called the large master chain, which has the most plugins used and the most modules used on Ozone 9. After the first three tabs, which are just the scenario tabs, I created an improvement percentage tab for each of the scenarios. And this kind of shows you how much did the CPU usage actually improve when using an eGPU in each configuration. So if we go back to the first scenario and look at the actual graph here, at the bottom you could click through each buffer size ranging from 64 to 256 for this scenario. In this scenario with about 15 plugins active, at the 64 buffer size, the eGPU with the single monitor was around 13% CPU usage, while the Mac Mini with both monitors plugged in was at 23% CPU usage. And if we go to the improvement percentage tab at the top, that's around a 77% improvement if you were to use an eGPU with a single monitor over the Mac Mini, which is pretty high. And again, you could scroll through, as you get into higher buffer sizes, the differences will be less drastic, but we could already see that the eGPU is much more efficient at lower buffer sizes, which is going to be great when you're tracking different instruments or even playing something on your MIDI controller. If we go to the next tab, which is kind of a light mixing session with a little bit of mastering plugins, again, at the lower buffer size, you're going to see a pretty drastic improvement. 58% for the single monitor on the eGPU, up to 73% for both monitors on the Mac Mini. And if we go to our improvement percentage tab for that, that was around a 26% improvement over the Mac Mini. And again, we could scroll through each buffer size on the improvement tab, and it'll show you different values for each buffer size. One thing to note, which I write at the top left of each scenario, is whether or not there was crackling or clicks and pops. And in this scenario, with only 15 plugins active, the Mac Mini started to have light crackling at 23% under the 64 sample buffer size. And something similar happened on the large mastering chain scenario, which we'll get into right now. So for the larger mastering chain, I of course use higher buffer size samples, which was 512, 1024, and 2048. Um, right out the gate, we could already see a, around a 20% improvement here from the eGPU to the Mac Mini. And again, I put a note stating that at the 96% CPU usage, which was under the 512 buffer size, the Mac Mini had extreme crackling. If I remember correctly, there was clicks and pops. It was almost unplayable, but the eGPU still worked perfectly fine, even at this low buffer size with so many plugins active. The most heavy plugin being Ozone 9 Advanced with all the modules active on it. If we click here and go through uh, 1024, the improvement is a little less, but it's still relatively good. For the eGPU single, there was still around a 20% improvement, but the eGPU both, when both monitors are plugged into the eGPU, there was only around a 17% improvement, which is still good. If we go to the highest buffer size, 2048, we're seeing about a 17% improvement for the eGPU single and around a 16% improvement for eGPU both. Again, the improvement tabs, you could see the exact percentage of improvement for each scenario, and you could click down here to navigate through the buffer size. One thing I realized later on in this test was one scenario I did not account for was testing with a single monitor plugged into just the Mac Mini rather than having both plugged into the Mac Mini. If you guys are interested and want that extra scenario to complete this data chart, I could try and go back and test each of these scenarios again with just my primary monitor plugged into the Mac Mini. Otherwise, I think this is a good starting point to show you the differences with each scenario and if an external GPU is worth the upgrade to you to work more efficiently in your DAW. Overall, I think the biggest improvement is going to be with the lower buffer sizes, especially if you're only using a single monitor. Well, most of the time you're going to see around a 18 to 20% improvement for your CPU usage. Now this test only highlights the differences for how much your CPU is working and how an eGPU can take the load off to help productivity and improvement. 
But other benefits of having an eGPU are small things like how smooth a window opens and closes, different plugins react a little more fluid, and you could even play games if you really want to with an eGPU, depending on your configuration and how good your CPU is. But other than that, I think that wraps it up for this video. I'll leave links for everything in the description. I'll try to export this file into a format that works for everybody. If you guys have any other questions about how I tested different scenarios, go ahead and leave me a comment. I'm pretty quick to respond. In conclusion, if you want to spend around $400 to improve the productivity of your DAW around 20% for the most part and much higher at lower buffer sizes, I would say it's a worthwhile investment. Of course, more strong cards such as the Vega 56 might net better results, but these are the parts I decided to work with for this test here. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.